It's good to know that uh, we have a God that can help us go all the way, but, but without him, we could not go anywhere. We could not do anything. Is that right? You can turn uh, the roster mic, number one, you can turn it off for me. Thank you, sir. If you have your Bibles, would you be kind enough to turn with me to Isaiah chapter 58. I heard someone on TV, it must have been on the news, I don't know which one it was, but they say the war has changed. Yeah, that's what they said. They said that the war had changed. And they were saying that in light of the fact that we've been dealing with... Uh, this COVID-19 uh, and therefore they felt as though things had happened, things had changed, so they decided to say that the war has changed. Isaiah chapter 58. I'm going to maybe stand once you get it, please, and I will read it in its entirety. There's 14 verses here. And it talks about true fasting. Now, I would tell you before I finish this that I'm going to call this church into a fast. And call it into prayer time. I was uh, uh, true fasting. Isaiah wrote to the children of Israel and said, Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of, our, of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in Sight cloth and ashes. Is that what you call a fast, a day of acceptable, a day acceptable to the Lord? Verse six. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and unite the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not share your your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter and you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your real God then you will call and the Lord will answer you will cry for help, and he will say, here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. 
You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild in ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. And you will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on your holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by you going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride in triumph in the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I want to talk to you for a few moments from this subject. Prescription for a pandemic. Prescription for a pandemic. Father, uh, please allow me now to share this word with these uh, people. I pray that their souls shall be edified. I pray that you shall be glorified in all that I say and all that I do. Please now, Father, come down and anoint me continuously with your Holy Spirit from the top of my head down to the sole of my feet. In Christ's name I pray and I ask it all. Amen. <clears throat> Prescription for a pandemic. Vaccine doses administered worldwide are 4 billion, 66 million, 710,761 on the worldwide COVID tracker as of July 27th. Confirmed cases of COVID worldwide is 196,748,728. When you look at this and you realize what's going on in the United States, 34,860,501 confirmed cases. This is as of the 27th of July. Vaccine doses administered worldwide in the United States is 344,071,595. Fully vaccinated is 45.4% and 57.21% received at least one dose. The myth is that the unvaccinated are black and brown. Liar, liar, liar pants on fire work with me only if you can uh cnn uh number guru said 14 percent of blacks 18 percent of hispanics and 31 percent of white republicans 10 percent white democrats 11 percent independents and 10 percent others are unvaccinated so yes we have struggled and we did not want to go but to say that we are the ones that are not being vaccinated is not so i, I thought florida 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 has 22 million five hundred and twenty two thousand and six hundred and seventy one vaccinated people fully vaccinated is 43.65 percent and 57.25 with at least one dose uh, we need a prescription for this pandemic as well as the pandemics in our personal lives. There is a pandemic of COVID-19, but there's also a pandemic in our personal life. Walk with me if you can. Background-wise, as we, as we are sick and cannot fix it ourselves, over-the-counter medicine is not working, the pain and problems of life are too much to bear, and you decide, I'm going to the doctor. When I get sick, I want to go to a doctor. Uh, and, and, and the doctor diagnoses the problem and writes you a prescription. Somebody ought to say amen on that. You, you take it to the pharmacy not knowing if it will work, but you want relief, so you're really not concerned about the cost of the medicine, so you go to the pharmacy. You give your prescriptions to the pharmacist. They fill the prescription. You take uh, the medicine home, and you take the medicine to begin the healing process because the prescription written by a qualified person called a doctor or practitioner. Here's the sidebar to the bench with the pharmacist. 
if you read about all the side effects and what the medicine can do for you, you would think you would not take it. But you take it anyway because you want some relief from the pain that you got. You ought to talk to me only if you can. But, but, but we have a vaccine to take against a deadly virus that will kill you. And people <coughs> excuse me, are hesitant to take it. This is not logical to me. Nevertheless, let me continue the message. If you miss the message, however, remember the story about the prescription written to the doctor that you take to the doctor, you have it fulfilled, you get it filled, and you take it. It may come back a little later in the text. But, 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 but I want to let you know, sis, I, I am concerned. Everyone here today and those who are viral and listening to the sound of my voice and not listening to the misinformation would agree coronavirus is not corona beer. Talk to me here. You know y'all drink that corona beer. Some of y'all do. If you don't, some other people do. Talk to me now. So coronavirus ain't no corona beer. Help me. Work with me here. It, it, would you agree that coronavirus is no joke? Uh, it is real and it is serious. It is scary. It is dangerous and it is deadly. Amen, somebody. Amen. This deadly virus is not playing around. You can see it. You can't, you can't see it. You can't hear it. You can't smell it. And you can't taste it. But it is present. Have I got a witness here? Uh, it is invisible and it has caused a lot of pain. This was a, this is real. Now here we are part, part two. Now we got part two, coronavirus, uh, D variants. And, and, and that, that is more contagious than the first virus. Medical pain, physical pain, business pains, children pain. Church pains, school pains, emotional pains, relational pains, economic pains, and political pains. Just pains everywhere. Talk to me here, only if you can. Now, uh, come here, Gundy, to the judgment bench for a moment. Yes, sir. Did I not give you the smallpox vaccine? Yes, sir, you did. Did I not give you the measles vaccine? Yes, sir. You did. Did I not give you the hepatitis vaccine? Yes, sir, you did. Did I not give you the shingles vaccine? Yes, sir, you did. Yes, sir, you did. I, did I not give you a vaccine for the children to prevent cancer? Yes, sir, you did. I heard, Pastor Gundy, some, some people grumbling going on down there. Yes, sir, you heard right. They've been grumbling. Let, let, well, tell them, tell, tell, tell them. No, they are not grumbling against you. They are not grumbling against the doctors. They are grumbling against me. Because I provided the scientists. I provided the scientists. I provided the medicine. I, prov I made a way out of no way. But you still won't take it. Uh, everyone is looking for a resolution. For at least most are looking for a resolution. They, they, they want a prescription for this pain called COVID-19. In life this morning, I, I will give you a prescription for your pandemic as well. Not just our collective pandemic, but your personal pandemic also. The fears, anxiety, financial stress, the family issues, and the life itself. The things that are eating at your life is like a pandemic. Come on, talk to me now. In this current environment since 2019, up to this very date, there has been a lot of pain. There has been abuse, neglect, frustration on many different levels. Dr. Tony Evans put it this way. He said, those of us who are in relationship with God and we take the prescription seriously, we can see some resolutions. You got to have a relationship with Jesus to see a real resolution for your problems. Only walk, talk to me, not, not only the medical issues we deal with, but the other issues we are dealing with throughout our lives. I'm, I'm, I'm moving on here. In our families and in our society, God, he, uh, the great physician can, has written a prescription over 2,000 years ago. There is still balm in Gilead. Have I got there? Still a physician in the house. There, there, there is a prescription for COVID-19 and for your personal pandemic. Where, 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 where do we find this prescription in God's word? In Isaiah 58 verses 1 through 12. There are three ingredients for this prescription. 
three medications that if you take it, it will begin a process of healing of your life and the world as we know it. God's people were facing a crisis and today we are facing a crisis as God's people. Uh, if God can't get his people right, you cannot expect to get the world right. I'm going to say that again. If God can't get us right, we can't expect the world to get right. Can, can, I, can, can somebody say amen on that? Uh, and 2 uh, and, 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 and Chronicles is still evident. If my, you are, you, 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 you ought to, you, 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 it, it, has, it, it has not been ripped out of the narrative of the context of the Holy Scripture. God inspired by the, the Scripture was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And, and that's so you, you still remember this when he said, if my people, you ought to be able to finish that, who are called by yeah, you ought to be. Able, you you know the rest, don't you? You 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 would humble themselves and then pray and then what? Seek my face. And and, and the problems are more than this virus. There's a misinformation problem, which is no less than a lie. And lies come from the author of liars by the name of Satan. The divisions, the racism, the injustice are all viruses in themselves. It gets embedded in the hearts of humanity and eats at the souls. And we need a prescription and God has the answer. Yes, Follow me if you can. The narrative of Isaiah 58 reveals the people are religious. Uh, they, they were crying out, raising their voices like a trumpet. They were religious people. They said all the right things and they fast. And what is fasting? Fasting uh, uh, to give up a craving for something in the physical to gain something in the spiritual. Help me here. Fasting the spiritual trumps the physical. Help me now. As bad as the physical is, we need the spiritual to invade it. Get rid of it and destroy it. This church and churches around the world need to begin a fasting and praying crusade and the black church in particular because we have stayed with the precepts and the principles of God's word and this world needs the black church. Ah, uh, uh, for God's word, uh, the world needs our love. The world needs our forgiveness, uh, the world needs our reconciliation and to help the world to return to God. Uh, however, in this case, the religious folks here in this text, they were saying all the right things and doing nothing. You know anybody like that? They, they say all the right things, but they ain't doing. Help me here. And, and, and therefore, listen, if, if, if all you see is what you see, you have not seen all to be seen. That is physical and visible the physical and visible is always preceded by something invisible and spiritual so to properly address the physical you must address the invisible spiritually ah follow the scripture in isaiah 58 they are struggling but had a religious purpose on them yet they had a problem in verse 3 in verse 3 it says these words in isaiah 58 and 3 why have we fast they say they talking to God. Well, well, well why have we fast? And, 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 and God said, and, and, and you have not seen us. You have not heard us. You have not acted on our behalf. We, some people have been fasting and the pandemic is still around uh, uh, the virus. And some people have been fasting and your, your life is still full of problems. But so so you, sometimes people think that God has not heard you, but God heard you. He's seen you, but maybe you're not doing the right thing. <clears throat> only talk to me if you can here now when you look at this and you come to grips with what's going on in the text and, and, and you see this invisible and you understand what's going on you prayed and nothing happened and, 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 and you fast and nothing happened you confess and nothing happened I hope you have been praying and fasting individually and collectively about your needs in COVID-19 and now variant D what are you seeing? The text says we humbled ourselves and nothing is happening. Why isn't this working? Why aren't we seeing more changes in our lives and our families, communities? Why are we not seeing the supernatural address the natural? 
Why does it may seem as though God has not addressed COVID-19 when in fact he has? Uh, when you look at this and you come to this, why, why, why is it not working? We're not seeing this supernatural. Brothers and sisters, let's look at the prescription uh, number one of three. First prescription. Follow me if you're in your Bible. Now, you, you don't, don't just, just, just. The first prescription is found in verse four and five. Here's the prescription. Uh, look, 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 look close at that text. 58, verse four and five. They asked the question, why is it? You ask God something, he'll ask you. Why, why is it that this is happening and, and nothing has changed? Uh, uh, he said, your fasting ends in quarreling and strife. Must I bring it to, 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 to your reality? Uh, the, the, one of the biggest problems we're having is that uh, in, 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 in the Senate, in the Congress, they're quarreling and uh, help me somebody here. A bunch of strife going on. What, what, what's going on in our state government? Quarreling and strife going. What's going on in our quarreling and strife? What's going on in our homes? And now keep quarreling and strife going. L listen to the text. Listen to the text. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. <laughs> wicked fists killing one another. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, you, you take a gun and put it in your hand, you squeeze it, it's in a fist. Y'all better pay attention to that. Look, look at the text. Look at the text. He said, why, why, why things have not happened the way you think they should? He said here, and, and, and he said, you cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Uh, I, I'll explain it out to you. Verse 5. And this, the kind, is this the kind of fast I have chosen? This God told me. Is this the kind of fast I've chosen? <laughs> Look at what he says here when he asks that question. Uh, only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? The point is you can go through a religious exercise and it goes nowhere. I ought to say that again. You can go to church. You can speak the Christian language. And it goes. Y'all don't talk to me. Nowhere. Y'all, 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 y'all. I got your attention. That's good. Uh, 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 the people of God want God to intervene without changing their ways. See, that, that's what's happening. Uh, you, we can't expect God to intervene on our behalf if we're not willing to change. This, this stuff is serious. And, and, and the more and more I look, you think this sermon here today, you, you hold on. This, 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 what we're dealing with is serious. We've got to change our ways. And, and God made it, made it very clear. Uh, verse 1 takes, talks about their transgressions in the text. <clears throat> but they did not align their lives in obedience to God while they carried on their religious activity. Being religious can satisfy you, but let me illustrate this for you. <clears throat> Look, I love ice cream. And I, and I need to try that like, 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 like toast ice cream that's supposedly not upset your stomach and do all that. I love ice cream. And I really love ice cream with a, 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 a chocolate cake, Sister Melton, a yellow chocolate cake with, with icings, a double chocolate, and, 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 and a little cup of that ice cream, uh, uh, Blue Bell, yeah. You got a free commercial from the Blue Bell. Uh, the, 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 and, and what I want to do is I want to take the ice cream, Deacon Bailey and, and Deacon Howard, and I want to put the ice cream in the cake in the microwave. <laughs> and I only want to warm it up for like 10 seconds. Just to get the cake a little more moist. <coughs> Man, what's going on today? Yeah, can, I get a, can I get a cough drop from somebody? Just get a little, little, little case and get it in there. But the problem is, <coughs> it has no nutritional value. Y'all hear what I just said? Let me give you another illustration. Yesterday, uh, Sister Green, 
before I came into here and I start tending to y'all business and trying to get y'all to do something for me. Uh, the the uh, <clears throat> uh, Deacon, Deacon uh, 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 Gillis, <clears throat> he came in here with two boxes of donuts. And I'm telling on somebody, but I ain't going to call his name. One of the pe 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 people that were in the meeting with us should have not been eating any donuts whatsoever. And, and, and then there was another one in there, and I'm not going to call his name. He was sitting across from him, and he was eating donuts too. I ain't, I'm not calling anybody's name. But, 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 but I said to them, I said, you know, those donuts have no nutritional value. They sweet. That, that cake and that ice cream I got, they're sweet. But it has no nutritional value to it. And, 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 and one of the deacons kind of challenged me and say, well, it's got eggs in it. And it's got, you know how they do. And, and it's, you know, you know how they do the brother, you know. So what I do, I go over to my computer and I pull it up and pull the nutritional stuff out of there. I said it has no real nutritional value, but it's sweet. It tastes good. Have I got a witness here? Religion is sweet and it tastes good. Uh, singing the songs of Zion is sweet and it tastes good. Have I got a witness here? Reading God's word is sweet and it tastes good. Have I got a witness here? Uh, uh, and, 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 but unless you have truly changed your heart, Somebody ought to talk to me now. You can, you can sing all you want, or you can, you can pray all you want, or you can, can, can serve, all, but unless it changes your heart, it has no value to God. And this is what is happening to them right here. There was no value in their fasting because it wasn't in their heart. There was no value in them humbling themselves because it wasn't in their heart. You got to have this in your heart. So here, 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 you can come to church, but if you are disrespectful in church, it values you nothing and it will cost you some pain later on. You young people, the Bible says you must honor your mother and your father. And if you disrespect your mother and your father and your grandparents, it's going to cause you some pain a little bit later. You bet. We got to line it up with the word of the Lord. Have I got a witness here? That must be a pursuit of righteousness, not perfection, but a pursuit of righteousness, pursuit of God, the repentance of our unrighteousness and sins. Everyone wants God to bless their meetings, bless their decisions, bless their lives, bless their families, bless their home and bless other things. But they don't want to bless God. By being obedient to God's word and God's way. You can get God's blessing. So in this text, what is happening in that first verse, they were not being obedient to what God wanted to do, so they couldn't get God's blessing. So your fasting, he said, was nothing to me. Amen. Being humble was nothing to me. Oh. There is a... <laughs> we are supposed to be on with Christian soldiers. We love to sing that song. But we are going backwards as Christian soldiers. Uh, we must respect our, God's house, respect God's grounds, respect parents, respect adults. The, the disrespect is a pandemic in your life, and it could cause you your death. That's why he said, honor your mother and father, that your days may be. Because you can always get your days cut off, young people, by disrespecting your parents or disrespecting God's house, or disrespecting your teachers, or disrespect, you better hear what I'm saying to you, you're getting ready to go back to school. You got to get it right. And adults have to get it right. You don't need your child to be your friend. I'm still trying to figure out why children telling parents whether they want to come to church or not. I ain't quite figured that one out yet. Boy, boy, I wish I had told Minnie Lee Gundy I didn't want to go to church. She'd have probably whipped my butt all the way there. You, not go, you don't want to go. Yeah, right. I'm just saying, I'm saying, oh, Gary Coleman used to say, what you talking about? 
What you talking about, Pastor? God says, honor your mother and your father that your days may be long. You young folks have discovered that since COVID-19 has showed up, life is. COVID-19 has got everybody's undivided attention. I got my gloves back on. I ain't putting my hand on the gas pump no more without some gloves. Y'all better hear what I'm trying to tell y'all. I got my, 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 my hand sanitizer. I ain't trying to, I, I'm trying, y'all better hear what I'm trying to tell you now. I'm trying to help you. Until God decide to move this out of the way. We got to fast. We got to pray. We got to be obedient. We got to keep, first take God seriously. Humble yourself and pursue a relationship that is righteous with God. Through Jesus Christ. Until you and I, I'm almost, almost through. To you and I, uh, and the rest of this nation in particular, and the world as a whole, walk humbly with God. It matters not how much you come to church. How much you serve in the church. How much you pray or fast or how much you, religion you have. It goes nowhere because you are doing it your way. With God, this is not Burger King. You can't have it. Somebody ought to talk to me here. You, and, and I like to go to Burger King and I like to get it my way. I, I don't want a Whopper unless I want the mayonnaise off it, but I want it slapped dead with that tartar sauce they got. That's my way. But I can't have my way with God. Have I got a witness here? Uh, let me give you another illustration here. When babies are born, sometimes they try and come out feet first like I did. They call breech babies. So they got to take their hands and whatever they use, and they got to turn that baby around so the head will come out right. Does that make sense to you? <coughs> they have to reach in in the womb and turn the baby right. Now that you are born again, is your head turned right? You say that you've been born again. So I just want to know if your head turned right. Because if your head turned right, we can get rid of these pandemics in our lives. We can get rid of this pandemic that's going on in the world. But our head got to be turned right. I just believe if you get your head turned right, we can change some things. You know. Oh, oh, Deacon Gordon liked to sing. I don't know whether he's singing the club or not, but he he sang. And uh, uh, some of y'all probably used to sing with some groups or something. But but there was a song by the the the, the miracles. Uh, let me use the, the miracle song second second that emotion. Yes, sir. I want to turn, turn it around for a moment. You know, I used to like second that emotion. Yeah, you know. Maybe you want to give God kisses sweet, but only for one night with no repeat. Maybe you'll go away and never call, and taste of honey is worse than none at all. Oh, little saint, in that case, I don't want no part. I do believe that would only break God's heart. Oh, but if you feel like loving God, if you got the notion I used to woo-woo. Y'all catch that later. <laughs> we must get off our spiritual roller coaster and spiritual motions. Do you realize some people like me do not want to get on the scale? Man, you know, the scale, you, I, you know, I really don't want to get on it. I, I, I see me. And, and, and you know why? I, they do not want the truth. They don't want the reality. They, 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 and a lot of us do not want to be confronted by unrighteousness. Unrighteousness in marriage, economics, racism, hatred, prejudice, and face our sinfulness before God. We just want to have 
a feel-good religion. You know, we say, have you got good religion? Certainly, Lord. Uh, yeah, it sounds good. Uh, may I define true religion to you? I'm about to close. True religion, James 1st and 1 and 27. Religion that God, our Father, accepts as pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. People tend to say, keep, look after widows and orphans, but they seem to let the, let the latter part of that go away. Don't be polluted by the world. So do you have good religion? Uh, prescription number one, a religious exercise going nowhere. Prescription number two, verse six, God asked the question. Is not this the fast that I chose? Is this what I chose? The second thing you must do to heal yourself of the spiritual pandemic, you must minister charitably to others. It means you are not a selfish saint. It means no matter what race, ethnicity, Jew, Gentile, you are not a selfish saint. You, you, you are not thinking about me, myself, and I. Whatever your pain, whatever your struggle, whatever the stress is, uh, uh, you are willing to minister to somebody else. Biblical charity serves the needs of someone else. Not expecting anything in return. And, and so I do this, you do that. A quad, a, a, a quad pro thing, a quit pro thing. Quit pro is business stuff. You know what happened. Uh, uh, you heard about this. This is not what believers do. We have been quarantined, but we reached out to others anyway. Now it looks like we are headed in the wrong direction with COVID-19. So much so, a pastor. No, not a pastor. He wasn't no pastor. You know, I don't talk about pastors. That's a rule we don't talk about each other, but I'm talking about this one. A pastor. No, not a pastor. A right-wing idiot. I mean, I got to get that out right. A right-wing idiot. Uh, I ain't called his name, so they'll never know who I'm talking about unless they go online and look it up. Said in Tennessee, to his congregation that he had two things for his church. One, do not wear a mask to this church. And two, if you wear a mask, I'm going to kick you out. I hear that music back there. Go ahead and play it. That is not a servant. And that is not a servant heart. That is not properly serving God. So get ready to serve even more if we must as needed. During this new COVID-19. If you're lonely, find somebody else that's lonely and call them and talk to them. If you, if you, if, if, if you, if you, want to work and can't find a job for yourself, but you got a friend and, and you ran across something, you can call them and tell them, look, I got a job you may want to go and apply for and look for. But do something. Do people come to worship service or worship selfish? If you are not willing to serve, you cannot cry out to God to serve you. It is more blessed to give. Well, Lord, then to receive. Not just tithing, but your time and your talent. Have I got a witness here? If you can sing, you ought to join the choir. If you're good at greeting people, you ought to become an usher. If you like cooking, you ought to join the culinary ministry. 
If you like teaching, you should become a teacher in Bible Power Enrichment Hour. If you want to help people find the joy you have in Christ, join the evangelism ministry. And if you speak another language, help us write the curriculum for others, but do something. But do not be selfish. Prescription for a pandemic. A lady uh, got a letter in the mailbox. Well, uh, and the letter said, I'm coming to dinner at your house. And uh, the letter was signed by the lonely Jesus. Well, when she got this letter, uh, she went to the grocery store because Jesus uh, was going to stop by her house. Well, uh, she went in the grocery store and she bought some groceries. And on the way out of the grocery store, she ran across a lady that needed some food. So the lady, she gave her some food and uh, she went back to the store because Jesus is coming to dinner. Well, uh, she came out the store this time and she ran across a man and the man needed a coat. So uh, the lady said, I'm going to get you a coat and I'm going to put it on you. And uh, because Jesus is coming to dinner, uh, she went on home. And uh, when she got home, uh, she found a note on her door. Uh, the note said, uh, thank you for providing me a meal and a coat. And it was signed by Jesus. Be careful who you entertain because you might be entertaining an angel. Be careful how you treat people because Jesus might be the one you're talking to. Have I got a witness here? Be careful when I was hungry you fed me. When I was thirsty you gave me something to drink. When I was, have I got a witness here? The way you show Jesus uh, is just how you love other people. Well, I stopped by to tell you uh, and to answer a question for you. What about the COVID-19 pandemic, Pastor? What must we do? Not religion, ministering with your heart in the dog eat dog world and messed up society. Tell us we need a prescription for not just COVID-19, but for ourselves. We need God to intervene in the affairs of our lives. We need God to intervene with the viruses, the plagues, the personal viruses, and the personal plagues in society. God said, I will heal the plague when you operate by my plan. I heard and I said earlier, if my people uh, who are called by my name shall humble themselves let me go back he said if my people if you have been born again there's something that God require you to do have I got a witness here when you operate on God plans God knows his plans for our lives and he knows the plan for this world God wrote the prescription in the Bible we must stay faithful we must fast and we must pray the first prescription says pursue righteousness the second prescription said serve others and then after you've done the first part play Pursue righteousness and the second part, serving others. You come to verse 8 and 12. I'm going to read verse 8 and I'm going to read verse 13. And I'm going on about my business. It says here in verse 8, watch what he said. He says, then your light will break before the light, the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Watch what he says. Then you will call and the Lord will answer your prayer. I got to go. I can't skip it. He said, if you do away with the yoke of oppression. He said, and if you spend yourself 
on behalf of the hungry, then your light will rise in the darkness. You go on down. I can't skip the verse. 13 said, if you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath, that means on Sunday morning, I don't care how long you've been working on Saturday night. God gave you the job to work. I don't care how tired you are, but come Monday morning when you got to go make that bread to keep bread on the table, you find a way to get up and go to work. Well, I stopped by to tell you, you ought to find a way to get up in here on church on Sunday morning. I'm talking to the crowd. I'm talking to you, but you are okay because you are here but there's somebody out there have decided that since COVID-19 showed up in their life that they didn't want to come back to the church but I'm telling you, the Bible says, forsake not the assembly of God. He's just waiting on you to come back to the church so he can come in and heal this land. So he can come in and heal your life. So he can come in and take this virus away. I got a word for you. The first prescription says, on the third and final prescription, our streets have mental health problems. Our streets have killings. Our streets have calamities. Our streets have COVID-19. Our streets have incest. Our streets have abuse. Our streets have drugs. Our streets have police brutality. Our streets have thieves and liars. Our streets have domestic violence. Our streets have unbiblical lifestyles. No, our children are lying, robbing, stealing, and killing one another. Our streets have sexual molestation. Our streets have broken marriages. Hey, I stopped by to tell you, but there is a prescription for all of us our streets are in trouble and we have to change our streets from battlegrounds to playgrounds our streets are in trouble there's conflict between citizens and police conflict between church and government conflict between democrats and republicans conflict between blacks and whites conflicts between brown and white conflicts between latinos and mexicans our streets are full of trouble yet we say we are children of god i heard and they had to be lying from this conservative right that they believe in the same jesus i believe in if you believe in the same jesus i believe in you ought to treat people better you ought to tell them to let my people go you ought to tell them to pass that voting rights you ought to tell them that they're not doing right but no you go in your churches you go in your home you fast and you pray but god is not hearing a thing you said i want god to intervene with COVID-19 in our lives we must do things God's way God's word is still a lamp unto my feet but it's a light unto my pathway there are prescriptions for a pandemic God's word happy or generous people because they give some of their food to the poor God word said so continue encouraging each other and building each other up just like you are doing already God word said be kind be compassionate and forgiving each other the same way that God forgave you I got a close God word said love each other as I have loved you my brothers and my sisters I have never seen the righteous forsaken now his children begging for bread I'm glad I met Jesus and since I met Jesus I don't act the 
same. I don't think the same. Have I got a witness head? Let us go to the heaven bound baseball game. I want to let you know I believe everybody want to get to heaven but you got to start off at first base. When you get there you ought to unclose the unrighteousness. Go to second base. You ought to confess your sins. Go to third base. You ought to pray and humble yourself so you can get home and be with the Lord. Have I got a witness here? You can't get to heaven unless you produce some fruit. I said, yes, Satan is on the mound. He will stand in at home plate. But I got a pinch hitter for you by the name of Jesus. He's throwing curveballs. He's throwing spitballs. He's throwing sinkers. He's throwing fastballs. And he's throwing change-ups. But I got a man that can hit it all. Do you know what he is? He's born again through his father. He came down through 42 generations. Have I got a witness here? Anybody can talk a good game. You can say amen. You can say praise the Lord. You can say thank you, Jesus. You can say hallelujah. But until some fruit show up, your prayers are falling on deaf ears. The scripture says there are benefits. Dark days will come. Do we go back to school? Back to work? Do we wear a mask? I stopped by to tell you, you better put that mask on. I stopped by to tell you, you better protect yourself. I stopped by to tell you, God's going to answer our prayer. But we got to pray. We got to fast. Have I got a witness here? Jesus said, I will turn your darkness into light. I will clear up some stuff. I have given you all the science you need. Why won't you follow my blessings? Anybody know? Yes, conflict, strife, rebellion, racism, classism, an attack on the capital of the United States. This country that we are living in is no world. This country that we living in have lost their mind. But I talk about and tell you, we got to go back to the bases. Get down on your knees. Get down. Tell God all about it. It's time out for laying in the bed and saying a prayer. It's time out for just praying at the table. You got to get down on your knees. If your knees won't do it, you got to prostrate yourself before a good God. And won't he do it? Deacon Raymond, if you don't think that it's going to hurt, it might hurt a little bit, but it's worth every effort. It's time to do it God's way. If your knees hurt, get you a pillow. But get on your knees. Have I got a witness here? We need a radical return to God's word. Have I got a witness here? Let's lead the governor out. Let's lead the mayor out. Let's lead the president out. We got to go to God. We got to be like this man by the name of Joshua. Joshua said, and for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Stop by to tell you, you got to serve him when you get up in the morning. You got to serve him in the new day hour. You got to serve him in the evening. But when you serve him, when you do it his way, let us leave all the other stuff out. Stop killing when you're trying to live. Stop taking pills for a peace of mind. Stop trying to eat your way to ecstasy. Stop trying to drink your way to pleasure. Stop trying to smoke your way to sin your nerve. Stop trying to puff 
your way to popularity. Stop trying to push your way up the power. Stop trying to bully your way to friendship. A place where the ignorant man can say, do not put your mask on. A place where a bad man can be made good. A place where prescription was fulfilled directly from God. You know about it. He came down to 42 generations. You know about it. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. I got a prescription for you. He'll make a way out of no way. He'll fix it. Won't he fix it? He'll change it. Won't he change it? He'll heal you. Won't he heal you? He'll bless you. Won't he bless you? His name is above every name. Every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess. His name is Jesus. Jesus. He died on a cross. They put him in a tomb. But early the prescription got up with all power in his hand. And I'm glad that he got up. Aren't you glad that he got up? If you're glad about it, uh, say yeah. If you love my Jesus, uh, say yeah. 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 Oh, I know he's all right. I know he's all right. Isn't he all right? I say, isn't he all right? He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. Isn't he all right? He brought you this far. Never to leave you. Never to forsake you. Isn't he all right? Oh, I know he's all right. I will 